This episode of DNews is brought to you by the Buy Power Card from Capital One. Every purchase brings you closer to a new Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, or Cadillac vehicle. Last week, a senior vice president of Google quietly parachuted from 135,890 feet, breaking the sound barrier in the process. How is it that a human can fall faster than sound? <laughs> Hey guys, Amy here for DNews, and to call the sound barrier a barrier is actually a bit of a misnomer. Anything moving through the air, like an airplane, has to push air molecules out of its way to move. This forms a pressure wave in front of and behind the airplane, and the faster that airplane flies, the faster those molecules have to move to get out of the way. The pressure waves start to compress. At a certain point, the molecules can't get out of the way fast enough. They form a barrier in front of the airplane that also compresses the pressure waves into a single shock wave that moves at the speed of sound, which is commonly called Mach 1. When the airplane goes faster than the speed of sound, it pierces through that barrier created by the built-up shockwave, creating a negative pressure space around it. The sonic boom is the sound associated with the sudden change of pressure. Engineers worked long and hard to get a plane to fly through the so-called sound barrier and go supersonic in level flight in the 1940s. For years, pilots trying to fly faster than sound had airplanes shake and break apart around them, thanks to those pressure waves. It was Chuck Yeager, piloting the X-1, which was designed to look and fly like a bullet, who first broke through that invisible wall in the sky. So how can a human make it through the sound barrier without a perfectly aerodynamic rocket-powered airplane. There's more to going supersonic than just speed. Altitude, and specifically the thickness of the atmosphere at different altitudes, is a major factor. The higher the altitude, the thinner the atmosphere, which means there are fewer air molecules for a plane or a body to push out of the way. Because extreme parachute jumpers like Felix Baumgartner and Alan Eustace jumped and free fell from such altitudes, it was easier for them to move air molecules out of the way to hit Mach 1, because the air is less dense. Baumgartner didn't need rockets to break the sound barrier, falling from more than 127,000 feet. Jaeger, flying the X-1 at 43,000 feet, on the other hand, did need a rocket boost. But interestingly, Baumgartner's supersonic moment required just 10 miles per hour less than Jaeger's. And of course, the specialized pressure suits these jumpers wear play a big part. Suits designed to protect the wearer from shockwaves associated with the sound barrier, even in less dense atmosphere, are vital to success, and not to mention survival. So what do you guys think? Would you make a supersonic jump? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more DNews every day of the week. This episode of DNews was brought to you by the Buy Power Card from Capital One. Every purchase brings you closer to a new Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, or Cadillac vehicle.